up it here. It sure is. Well, now that the warmer weather is coming here, we uh, you might be tempted to head to the nearest lake or beach. Yeah, but we have a warning this morning because the warm weather doesn't always mean warm water. As a matter of fact, it could be downright dangerous. And joining us right now to discuss the hidden dangers of cold water this time of year is Wyatt Werneth of the American Lifeguard Association. Good morning to you, Wyatt. Thanks for joining us. Good morning and happy Water Safety Week. Yeah, you guys have been busy. I understand you had 16 rescues and even a drowning, unfortunately, yesterday. So what was the cause of that, you think? It was rip currents. We actually have a perfect recipe here. We have had uh, beach restoration, the onshore winds with the outgoing tide. At the same time, people enjoy coming to the beach. So that's a disaster, as well as in an area where there were no lifeguards. Swim near a lifeguard. Oh, yeah, absolutely crucial to uh, be near those lifeguard stands. Uh, let's face it, the rip current threat is high today, especially in central and southern portions of the east Florida coast. But, uh, you know, the waters there never get that cold. We want to talk about what happens a little bit further north, where temperatures are going to be in the 80s, for example. Uh, people heading to the coastline, but the waters are still really chilly this time of year. Oh, absolutely. Uh, they can be surprising. You know, our body temperature is 98.6 98 degrees. Anything below that can cause hypothermia, and there's a series of events that happen when someone goes into the water. And one is if you suddenly fall off a boat and you don't have a life jacket on, you have the gasping reflex, which you can ingest water, and that can cause drowning. Yeah, I definitely know what you're talking about. I mean, typically I wait for that water temp above 70, but I'm kind of on the picky side. So what should you do? I see people wear wetsuits this time of year, and, you know, what happens if we want to go kayaking or canoeing this time of year? Well, that's great. If you're going to get out into the water, and again, it's perfect on top, the water could be cold. The number one thing is always file a float plan when you're getting ready to go out. That way somebody knows where you're at if you don't come back in. Wear a life jacket. And if you are going to get into the water, prepare by wearing a wetsuit or a dry suit in some of the colder areas. And now, just how much protection does that wetsuit versus dry suit give you? I know you could still succumb to hyperthermia even if you get past that big kind of gasp reflex uh, and, and, and don't suck in a bunch of water because you had the life jacket on. How long do those uh, wetsuits or dry suits protect you? Well, it depends on the body composition, but they, like you said, they do fail. They're only there for a uh, limited time. When that body temperature reaches the same as the uh, water temperature, the wetsuit's trying to thermalate, but it still gets wet and saturated, and wind will even cool it down faster. So it can still be a problem. You're right. And why, really quick, when do you suggest is the safest time to get in the water? Well, the number one safest time to be around the water is when there is a lifeguard present. And here in Cocoa Beach or in Florida, we usually open our towers up around 10 o'clock or so mm -hmm. till 5 in the evening. But when it comes to the water temperature, uh, it varies around. I mean, areas up north, uh, the surfers and the swimmers are still going into the water but they're wearing a wetsuit or a dry suit, depending on where they're at. Mm -hmm. So really, it just depends on the area. Yeah. And the safest part of the whole day is preparing for it, checking the weather channel, and knowing what the conditions are. <laughs> Absolutely. <That's typical. laughs> that knowledge is so important. Wyatt Werneth, American Lifeguard Association, thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, showers, perhaps.